All right, uh, let's bring in our friend now, uh, Sean Rogers. Sean, how you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm, I'm hanging in there. How you doing? Yeah, you got to you forgive. Should... You got to forgive my background and whatnot. I'm 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 on spring break, so I'm at the <laughs> hotel all... with the kids. That's all good, man. I told people that uh, when I used to interview you, you always had a little chuckle in your voice when you talked. You always had a great look at those big old choppers. They, you always had a great big smile. Uh, you were one of those guys that was just fun to interview and also fun to watch play football. Uh, congratulations on all your success in the NFL. Uh, what are you up to nowadays? Tell people a little bit about your daughter, et cetera. Uh, well, recently had a birthday yesterday on the 12th, so I'm officially old man gang. Um, really, I'm just retired, man, just trying to you know keep things together, manage, manage life. I got four. I got uh, four beautiful kids. My oldest right now, uh, as you mentioned, is committed to SMU for volleyball. So we're definitely excited to have another D1 athlete in the family and somebody pushing and promoting that athleticism forward. Hey, Other yeah. than that, like I say, I'm just retired, trying to you know, trying to maintain, man. Just keep just keeping it pushing, keeping it orange. <laughs> Football fans want to know if you have any male children, by the way, right now. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, I do. I have a young son. He's 10. <laughs> but, you know, he's more into basketball right now. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of kids are these days. Hey, you was, know, I think that's okay. Hey, so, Sean, so your, your younger son's got to be spending time at TJ Ford Academy then, right? He definitely is. He, he's, he's definitely been over there a time or two. And my two youngest girls have recently started basketball over there with TJ, so – it's great. Him and Tim and, and the TJ Ford Academy are putting on a good thing, especially in our area in uh, the southwest side of Houston. So he's doing a wonderful thing, and we're definitely participating. So, you know, we're horns stay together. I, I got to ask a question, Sean. Let's let's take you back to your time as a as a player a little bit. What, when did you know that you were a special football player? Like, when did you know, hey, I can play at the – I've got a I've got a memory of watching you do one thing, and I and I want to bring that up after you talk to me and, and tell folks when did you know? Hey, this NFL thing, I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to be able to play football for a long time. Uh, to to be honest, um, my father my father played professional football, so it, it kind of was something that I always had in my mind as a youth. Um, I just always just felt like that was my thing. Now. Even though I felt that way, my mother made sure my grades were intact and the school was very important and that was a priority, even though naturally and innately that football was my thing. But, you know, that was the carrot to keep me motivated in school and keep me doing right. But to be honest, I mean, it's just one of those things that I felt like I manifested from, from a youth. Like, that's just something I always wanted to be and I always envisioned myself at that. Now, you know, that happens for a lot of people. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people always, you know, hey, man, I want to be this. And there always is a time where you say, hey, the rubber meets the road and or that light switch goes off and you say, hey, man, this really could be for me. And I guess if you're asking that question and pertaining to the University of Texas, it probably was. I mean, it probably was my freshman year. I remember uh, when I was recruited there, I had a lot of D linemen ahead of me. I mean, we had we had. Uh, the strongest man in football at the time, Chris Aikens. Uh, yeah. Chris Aikens. You had Casey Hampton. You had Cedric Woodard. You had, I mean, you even had Gray Moser, Tim Warfield. These guys were, you know, highly recruited coming out of high school. Then you come in my class. You have myself, and you have the great Leonard Davis at the time. <laughs> a lot of people forget he was a defensive tackle coming into University of Texas, and we shared a room together. So, I mean, coming from a kid from Laporte, Texas, you know who hadn't, you know, who was just really naturally gifted, hadn't seen much opposition. As far as in position rooms, it was it was it was kind of astounding. I, I was like, man, this this is a lot to be done. <laughs> yeah. I, Jerry, you go ahead, bud. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're going to take some questions, too, from Texas fans. There's a lot of questions. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Sure. No doubt. Please. Hey, so here's my question. You were inducted into the Hall of Honor in 2017. And so when you guys grow up, you, you know, you're dreaming of being an NFL football player, right? And you reach that goal. What did it mean to you to be inducted into the University of Texas Hall of Honor? That, because that's not something you really ever think about, right? Correct, correct. I mean, a lot of times, you, you know, guys talk about being great and seeing greatness, but you don't, you know, it's, it's more so a feeling and a presence as far as your, 
you know, what you do on the field and what you do as far as in your field, you know what I'm saying? May it be football, basketball, you know, reporting, anything, you know, you speak of greatness. You don't always see the end game. You, you kind of say that as tools to uh, perpetuate you and motivate you through your career and what you're doing. So for me, you know, and people know me, they, you know, they know me in Texas had some rocky moments at times, but for them to come back and allow me the honor to be in the Hall of Honor, I think that spoke volumes about, you know, what some people there thought about me. And it, it definitely, it definitely uh, boosted the morale and, and the love I have for the university, just knowing that I'm going to be a part of that university for a lifetime in that way. All right. Hey, Sean, I got to, I got to say this. Uh, were you and Leonard Davis actual roommates or sweet mates? Please tell me you were sweet mates. <laughs> yes, sir. Same room. <laughs> yes, sir. We were sweet mates. We were lucky there for me go. at the time that we were we were still doing sweet mates. We didn't have to do roommates at the time. But <laughs> hey man, we shared a bathroom and that was an interesting <laughs> that was an interesting phenomenon. Now, you know, if you ever try to if you ever can think about Jester, if anybody's ever been to Jester, you gotta think of Leonard Davis, six, seven, three hundred and what was Leonard when he came into college? It was maybe like three ten, ten percent or eight percent body fat. It was ridiculous. Squeezing in this little shower in Jester. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We trying to pass by in the bathroom. It's like, yo, man, just let me know when you're done. <laughs> hey, we we got Sean Rogers here. Uh, Longhorn All-American Hall of Honor inductee, former long-term. How long did you play in the NFL, Sean? 10? 15, 13. 13, 13, 13 yes, years. Sir. Yes, sir. Wow. That's just really a, blessed. Amazing. Really We've blessed. We've got some uh, questions from fans here as well that we're going to get to. Uh, let's start with this one from David Williams. I don't know how much Sean watched Texas this season, but I'd like to know how he compares to Vondre Sweat and Byron Murphy to him and Casey Hamptons. What areas were they stronger slash weaker? Uh, I, I guess let, let me be nice first, uh, <laughs> because I think there's no better duo in Texas history than me and Casey. So no doubt. I, I, I said, let me be nice first, but then I shoot that out there, but <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm, I'm biased, but really for those guys, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. Uh, sweat with his size and athleticism. Um, He's actually a, a pretty, a real good technician. He plays well with his hands at the line of scrimmage. He sheds well. He uses his strength well. Uh, for his size, he's he's quite an amazing athlete. He shows great short area burst and quickness. Um, the Brian uh, was it was it Brian? Brian? Yeah, number ninety. I yeah, I, I I really like him. He kind of reminds me of myself more so. He seems a little bit more raw but a little bit more snappier off the ball, if you know what I mean. His yep. get-off seems a little quicker. He seems more 4-3 oriented, if you understand what I'm saying. Why, why Sweat is, I mean, he could play 4-3, but he's definitely, a, he could be a dominant 3-4 nose in the zero or in the tilt. Uh, I think they're better technicians than we were. I mean, the game has evolved so much. They play better with their hands at the line of scrimmage. They, you know what I'm saying, they shed blocks a little bit better. When me and Casey came out, it was just penetration game. It was get off the ball, be two and a half yards behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, we used to call it pump gaps and hit scenes. So we were just taking off the ball, trying to be on the other side of the line of scrimmage. When it looks like now, you know, the game and their hybrid front, they kind of play a little two gap sometimes. Sometimes they get to go. But for me, I think they're far better technicians than we are, again, with their hands and hand placement and just understanding the floor of the game. But – Overall, I just think we were a little bit more uh, impactful, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, like, not that these guys are not impactful, man. These guys are first round D tackles. I was not. <laughs> okay, let's get it clear. So I don't take nothing away from them. But when I say that, I just mean, like, our defense was kind of molded around us. It, it went as we went. You know, when, when the front got going and we were going, everything got better. If you yeah. if you kind of understand what I'm saying, well, to your point, to your point, Sean, y'all, you and Casey combined for 48 tackles for loss one season and over 50 tackles for loss, I think, another season. Right. So one year, I had like 27 myself. You had 27. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I was reading you reading over it this morning. You still got it. I love it. Oh uh, yeah, man. We all had nicknames, man. My nickname was Mr. TFL. I think yeah. Casey was. 
I think Casey was the lobster of love and said was the <laughs> sensational sand crab. <laughs> That's awesome. hey, so talk, talk, talk about that for you and Casey, friends, obviously great friends. Yes, Did sir. It, was it competitive for y'all too, though? Oh, definitely. Man, hey, man, definitely. Casey had four TFLs last week. I got to get me five. Definitely. That that's that's the way my game was motivated. Um, you know, there were always questions of how hard I worked, but it was one thing about me. I'm an ultimate competitor. I'm not gonna let anybody outdo me. So where I lacked in motivation just naturally as a worker, being in that environment, being amongst those kind of dogs and athletes, and not just Casey Hampton. Again, let's not forget Cedric Woodard was in yep. the room. Aaron Humphreys was around. Yeah. Um uh, later came, two years later or a year later came Corey Redding. Let's not forget that we, I mean, we had guys that just loved to compete and were athletes. And and we took it beyond the field, like from spades to the to the basketball gym to any, to the weight room. And that, that type of environment, mold and bread, just I, I think it, it helped breed some really, really strong football players. Yo, in cases to this day. Eight. Corey, Corey Redding, Cedric Woodard, I'm still in contact with them. We all we all brothers for life out of that room. Don't forget Marcus Tubbs. We had a, a Mark, I mean, we just had so many people come through that room in my short time in Texas. Yeah, y'all, y'all were a phenomenally talented team that when you got there, Texas was not necessarily an elite program. You, not only you, but Casey, Ricky Williams. Uh, Leonard Davis, guys like that started that started having not only success in college, but then took that to the program. Mac Brown kind of took that to the next level with the group like Corey Redding that you're mentioning. Uh, then you had the DBs that all came through and uh, anybody and everybody at Texas. It seems like you, you guys, you were recruited by John Makovic's group, right? Correct. Initially. Correct. Randy Rogers, if I believe. Yeah. Yep. Randy was mm-hmm. the guy that recruited you and Leonard Davis in that same class. Um, and, yes, and Mac actually been at Mike Williams was another one. Big Mike, Mike, Williams. Mike Williams. Yeah. Big, well, I mean, if, if you look at that, and I, I don't want to take any credit. I, I got to go back. When I first came there, I want to say they had just came off the big 12 championship. Yep. 12 championship. So nice I don't want to, yeah. I, I never won a big 12 championship. So I don't want to, I don't, you know, my old guys that I still talk to, uh, uh, who all did I talk to? I, I call him Black. He was a running back uh, for us with um, Ricky Williams. Sometimes y'all got to forget Sean me. Mitchell. Get Sean, Mitchell. Sean Mitchell. I still talk to Sean Mitchell. So Sean is a good friend. So I, hey, I got to give them their props before I talk to Sean. He, da, 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 da. You know, yeah, we were there before you. Uh, again, you got to forgive me. Sometimes I draw blanks. I don't do them every now and then. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. I went to Detroit with him. He was ahead of me. Uh, Brian Westbrook, yeah, big oh, brother. Yeah. I stayed with him in, in Detroit when he went. You know, so there were there was there were some studs there. I remember my recruiting trip. I think I I came to watch them play Notre Dame, and that's when Brian Westbrook hit hit that guy on the sideline. So uh, let's even go back. Tony Brackens, like you know, T. Brackens is an all time great. He was a guy I looked at coming up. Yeah. So. I, I know we 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 set the stage for a lot of talent. Uh, I don't think we won as much as we should have with the talent that we had at Texas in my years, but it definitely came to fruition later with the talent that came in. You know, the Vince Johns, Roy Williams came in. You know, I was on tail end of Roy Williams getting there, the legend Roy Williams. Let me get him right. Um, that whole great class of receivers that came in. Uh, man, I can't think of even everybody's name. Yeah. I, yeah. I, Oh, it, yeah. it, 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 it's so many guys, and it's honestly been so long ago. I, I don't want to butcher everybody's name. I'll start calling people's first names and different last names. And <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, who was that guy? Hey, Sean, question from Texas fans. Who did you mm-hmm. want to beat more, A&M or OU? Or was it just the same? Uh, I think a little bit of A&M more, just because they were in-state, mm-hmm. and I ran into those guys. Me and Rocky Bernard knew each other. Baytown Laporte rivalry, so yeah. you know it. You, I just knew those guys. You know what I'm saying. A lot of those guys were from Houston or from the area. 
So it, it, it was always a big deal with A&M. And being right down the road, you know, there were certain times we ride down to A&M. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I always had this theory that, that uh, guys from Houston – are more feel like it's more Texas Texas A and M rivalry, and guys from Dallas think it's more Texas OU. I, I could I could I could understand that just the proximity, yeah, just the proximity. You know, it. it I mean, Houston, we're forty five minutes an hour away from Bryan College Station. Yep. What is it? Dallas is what four hours or two yeah. and a half? It's four yeah. hours from Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. And we we both know we all know if you're from Texas, Houston. And Dallas, we think we are in two different states. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, Rob, we had another question come in uh, that I think would be great for you to answer. This one from Brendan Bowersox. Uh, yeah. We really appreciate your time, and I know the people here in the Longhorn community do too. No, I love it, man. I haven't had an opportunity to talk about these memories in a while, so <laughs> some of them are coming back, and some of them are a little foggy. But I appreciate the opportunity. Hey, and by the way, I, I got it before you. I got to give TJ Ford credit for bringing Sean and I together. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, that's and my that's guy, man. And I got connected and got, got Sean to the show. So thank you to TJ for that. Yeah, right. TJ, that's my man. He's doing his best. He does his best to keep guys in the loop. I, I don't think TJ. That gets enough credit. I agree. For what he does for Texas. I mean, I'm talking about across the board with all sports. TJ has been, he's been a sounding board. He's been, I mean, he's been a, a, a role model. And he's, you know, he's he's a Texas advocate through and through. He tries to bring us all together, football, basketball, any group he can get his hands on. So he's yeah, a connector. He, yes, he's sir. a connector. That's what he yes, is. Sir. Hey, this one from Brandon, Brendan Bowers. Yeah. What was his most, what was your, uh, Sean, most enjoyable? Best game that you played at Texas and why? Um, you know what? Out of all, there's a few games man, I had to dig. Uh, kind of the one, one of them goes back to the first question you asked what the moment was when I realized I want to say my freshman year, we had a lot of injuries. Casey got hurt against Rice towards me up. Uh, big dog, Chris Aikens towards me up, I want to say against Rice. And then we was they started rotating guys. I just didn't happen to be one of those guys early. I eventually got in Texas OU game my freshman year, made a few plays. And then I kind of started getting looked at as I started seeing opportunities to play. So now I come around to, I guess, let's say the second game. Uh, I want to say we were playing my sophomore year. Was it my sophomore year? We're playing Nebraska at home. We're number five. They're number two, I want to say. Or was that my junior year? It, the next two games are Nebraska games. We beat them one in Nebraska. We came home pandemonium. We ended there like 40-game home win streak. It yeah. was pandemonium in Austin when we got back, which I love. Then another Austin get, next game I can remember, we played Nebraska in UT. Game day. I think we were five versus number two. Yeah. And, and I kind of balled out that day. I want to say I had like two sacks, a few tackles for a loss. Yep. I had a good day on national. So it was that was a big game in, in my memory. Yeah. So five, he had five, Sean had five T, TFLs. It's probably where you got your nickname. Five TFLs, <laughs> uh, seventh most in Texas, history of Texas football in a game. Five TFLs in that game and that yeah. one over Nebraska. Yeah, we had we had a day. I, I, I got to ask you this question before we let you go here, Sean. Thank you so much again for joining us. Um, you went out to California. Do you remember this for a high school all-star game? Whoa. <laughs> you, do you remember that? You're, re you're really making me dig. Yeah, the, the Caltex yeah. game. Yeah. This is, this do they is even a, have that anymore? California. I, I don't have that anymore. Not the Shriners for sure. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> the yeah, guys with the, the little Shriners. hats in the cars. <laughs> It was the Texas California All Star Game, and I was doing the TV for it, and so I got to go out to practice and see and visit with all you guys. And the, one of the funniest things ever was watching Sean Rogers at 300 pounds being asked by his entire team to do a backflip, and you did it—a <laughs> standing backflip at 300 pounds. You still have that same type of agility, Sean Rogers? If I did, I don't have the mindset. I'm old now. I'm in my 40s, man. A fall will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> no knees left. Done. You're, no, you're sir. I, 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 I've used 
I tell them I used all my turbos, man. I'm out. I'm out. I'm I'm, I'm here. I'm for motivational purposes only, man. It's just for aesthetics. <laughs> well, congratulations. Enjoy your spring break. Uh, congratulations yes, to your daughter uh, as well and her. I really want to appreciate. I thank you again. So let me also give a shout out to her. Hey, Kennedy Rogers. Thank you. Your dad is very proud of you. I appreciate all you've done. So I just want to give you a shout out. Thank you, baby, for being who you are. That's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. All right, Sean Rogers. Thank you very much, Sean. We'll do we'll do it again. Gary, we'll Bobby, again. thank you for the opportunity. We must do it again. Yes. Uh -huh. And I promise you, I'm going to drag Hamp on here, man. I, yes. I'm, oh, I'm enjoying going down memory on. lane. I'm going to drag him on. <laughs> I hope it's fun. Take care, buddy.